Peace. Hey guys, Carbonator and Rel Sucker here, and today we're finally back for another episode of Wrestling and Logic of the so long not having, not being able to do some of the episodes. We were gonna do full gear, but I didn't take enough notes on time. But I did manage to take notes for this Survivor Series, and this will be the season finale, the season one finale. And we have survived 2021, and obviously a lot has happened, as you can see. I got a new cut with braids and a ponytail. And Ralph Murphy got a cut as well. And <laughs> Man, have I have a ponytail? Yeah. I got a ponytail. But no. I also have a cold. I don't know, maybe not a cold, but just bad allergies. They decided to go crazy today. I've been sneezing, blowing my nose, snot's been coming out. It started last night even. Oh. Well, hopefully I'll survive, and we survived this pay-per-view, Survivor Series, and uh, before we get on with anything, anything you'd like to say, Raw Sucker? Okay, we don't want to say I respect anything it. yet. It was not, it was not good. Okay. Not no, not good. And so, and so is the news right now. I fuck hate this company. I really do. Oh, um, and sweet uh, company. Uh, apparently, they made some more releases, including mm. Tiga Knox um, and a couple others. Damn. Let me let me look, look up these releases. Um, there's too many to even name one like what the hell there's way too many releases to even name a damn release damn. like let's see all these so I'm reading this article from screen rant hold up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every wrestler just released by the WWE, why and what comes next? Keith Lee, Nia Jax, and Karrion Cross, and more were released from the WWE in November 2021. Here's every wrestler caught by the company and what comes next. Here's an in-depth breakdown of every wrestler released by the WWE during their November 2021 round of budget cuts. The sports entertainment empire let go another 18 superstars to kick off the month, adding to an already dismal year that has seen more than 70 wrestlers in total released from the company, including major cuts like The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Braun Strowman. Good riddance. WWE has come under fire multiple times for releases of waves of talent throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, despite several of the competitors remaining with infinitely smaller budgets doing exactly the opposite. In total, more than 120 wrestlers have been let go by the billion-dollar organization since the start of 2020 growing criticism as WWE continues to generate more money than ever before due to lucrative TV contracts and an even more controversial deal still in place with the Saudi Arabian government. This latest collection of budget cuts 
isn't quite as shocking as some of the prior ones, but WWE is still pulling the plug on quite a few established acts, including several key members of their women's division that could prove immensely useful to competitor companies like AEW and Impact Wrestling. In addition, WWE has axed many homegrown talents who primarily train at their own WWE Performance Center in Florida. Here's all 18 WWE releases. Nia Jax. What do you think about that? Here's a crap. <laughs> okay. Horrible wrestler. Never should have been a wrestler. Who cares? No, I no, have no, to say something. Everybody thought she was safe because she was under the relation of The Rock. Nope. Nope. Get the hell out of here. No. Yeah. Don't. The two people who I do not have no remorse for getting from them not being released. It's Nia Jackson, and Eva Marie. That's all. Oh, yeah. That's I, all. I think Eva Marie is part of the most recent releases. Thank you. Let's see. <laughs> Vince, it's not right. So, Nia Jax, but Nia Jax has been an imposing, if not controversial, presence in the WWE Women's Division since arriving in 2014. Apparently, she got released because she didn't want to. She didn't want to combine yeah. with the COVID vaccine mandate. Yeah. Uh, she, Bullshit. She's, uh, anti-vaxxer and by the way all of you people need to get the jab and go and vaccinate and protect everybody just a reminder i got it yeah i got it a couple months ago anyway a homegrown talent i thought i'll start training at the wwe performance center and competed in nxt before being moved to monday night war in mid 2016. As one of the company's most consistently active women in recent years, she has wrestled virtually every main to come to WWE's door, including Ronda Rousey. Now, as a former WWE Women's Champion, and Women's Tag Team Champion, she competed in the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match, and while not always successful, she has competed in four different... Can I also say something? What? That for all... For every for everyone's release, this this is all the indies... This is all the indies' power and gain to get their wrestlers back. Look at AEW. You have Bobby Fish and Tony Nese back. Look at Impact Wrestling. They have Bronson Reed. Like, what... Like, what... If there's more things to if there's more things to offer is for the for the indie scene because because half these fucking these whole releases are all a bunch of people who was under control by Triple H yeah. and NXT yeah. and NXT and I think yeah. what Vince is trying to do is to erase Triple H's NXT history because because he was doing stuff right while this old man was not and and it's kind of the truth right now. And you, and you never, and you never know what things n can might happen. That's why Nick, Con Nick, they need to make money. Budget cuts. John Laurinaitis calling them budget cuts. Bu budget bullshit. It's not budget cuts, bro. It's something else. It's a whole agenda. They did not have to release the fucking entire faction of Hit Row. They did not have to. They could have kept them. Yeah, but no, they, that was Triple H's final and final thing to create. That was that was his final one of his last things with Tegan Knox. That that was it. Like and, they they re they really did not have Tegan Knox will find some work, and yeah. Isaiah Swerve Scott will also find some work. Yeah. The rest of the hit. Shut the hell up, cat. The, the, the rest. <laughs> oh no no! Please don't don't abuse it. Oh jeez. Oh. The rest the rest of the people from Hit Row, I don't I don't know. Oh. But they did not but they did not have to release everybody. First of all, another thing that's going on with NXT, they're losing their original stars. Literally. Yeah. Johnny and Kyle are about to are about to be free agents right now. 
And uh, the only one left is Tommaso Ciampa, who is champion. Literally. Yeah. Pete Dunn is not going to carry it. Eli Drake, LA Knight is not going to carry it. Who else is there to carry NXT 2.0? That's one. It's NXT 1.0. It's no 2.0, literally. But everyone who, who just got who's gonna who just got is gonna be released. Either gonna find some indie work or go straight to fuck to Mr. Tony Khan, man, to AEW. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Except for Nia Jackson, even Marie, they don't deserve. It. <laughs> they should stay home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like literally. And, and Braun Strowman. They should stay Braun. home. Well. But anyway, I'm not going to read this whole Nia Jax thing. So another one is Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux. And damn, I, actually not damn. I take back my damn because uh, it's not really a surprise. I mean, they, they booked him like crap the first few weeks he was there. And then uh, they had him on that segment. They booked him for they booked him for so so great, and then made him drop the NXT Championship to Samoa Joe because he lost his first match on Raw against Jeff Hardy in ninety seconds, which I fucking ranted on the bus about. Yeah. Go watch that. Um. Crazy. Uh. And and then booked him in suspenders, looking like. Looking like Shredder, Go Ninja Go from Teenage Mutant <laughs> Ninja Turtles, yeah. and then and then made him feud with John Morrison and Jackson Riker, and Humberto Carrillo and Ricochet. Yeah, and kept and kept his wife off TV, and then released, and then and then he was off TV. They was about to book him, and then like an. Alistair Black gimmick, sort of, and then he was gone. And they released him. Yeah, so uh, like, I guess this release, like that was. I'm guessing this release was for the most best. wasted talent I ever seen in a decade. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Killer Cross. That's who he is. Fuck is a carrying cross, bro? What? Come on. Yeah. Shut up. Oh. Yeah. Back. The next one is Keith Lee. I think this is a another same, one. Same for uh, Karrion Cross because uh, he he also uh, should. He deserves to be released so he can go somewhere where he, where he will be treated properly. Like AEW. I think Karen Cross should go to AEW. You know, they need to get as many of these big stars as they can so that they can quietly weed out all the garbage from their program. But anyway, um, it, you know, with Keith Lee. Keith I mean, Lee. They and changed him up so much. It. They kept on. He would no. Keith Lee was also the Triple H project. Yeah, and they ruined him. So I knew there was Vince is really trying, really trying to race anything that's had results under Triple H's two dish in NXT. Scotty Tuhati also quit because look what the hell Vince is doing. Yeah. He's ruined. You real old school versus new school at war games. Do you realize what the hell is going on? Yeah, I, I, last Who's, year's last year's war game sucked, so probably this one is gonna be even worse. So we're gonna skip that. Um, but anyway, they changed um, up. Um, then Keith uh, Lee made history, being the first time. NXT and NXT North American champion when he beat Adam Cole. Yeah. And he, he, that, that was that was a great moment. He had to drop the title because he apparently, apparently that's a new rule. You can't hold two titles at once, says William Regal. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you can't split the 
then why have him hold the title and hold those titles in the first place to make a moment to be AEW? That's what are you doing? That's yeah. when you know something something was happening. The yeah. transfer of power from R Triple H and Shawn Michaels to Vince and Bruce Pritchard. Like you, that's that's when you know. Well. Yeah, Josh went he, crazy over that uh, when when I, Keith Lee dropped the North American Championship. He even slammed his mic up against his laptop because and made it in. That was the most stupidest decision NXT made, and I love NXT. I used to love NXT. NXT was like AEW. They had a head with Tommy, and they had Keith Lee. They had Alistair Black. They had Ronson Reed. They but undisputed era. But, but look, what's AEW has two halves of the undisputed era, and the other two halves is on NXT suffering, literally. Yeah. But they called up. They called up Keith Lee after he dropped the the, the, the championship to Karrion Cross. Then. Pulled him up and changed this fucking theme song. Hello? Hello? Oh, man. Hold up. You can continue what you were saying. You are not professional, Cabo. What are you doing? What's your fucking Toy Story pillow? What are you doing? Uh, anyway, anyway, they called up him in fucking new theme music, which I, which was cringe. It was bad. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle looking at him like, what the fuck is this? They looked at him. He got an instant championship match where he did not, where he did not deserve because he just dropped the title. And then... What else even happened? Um, so that, and then they changed his music again to a, I guess, better than the last one. I, I don't know. And then right. they, and and then they kept him off TV for seven fucking month for seven and a half months. We all thought Vince had some issue with them, but no, he was out because of COVID compilations. Yeah. Dude thought he was gonna lose his life. Mia Yim, who was another one that got released, thought that he thought that he, she really sacrificed herself out of the Royal Rumble to see if her man will be alive. Yeah. And they brought him, they brought him back as Keith Lee again. But then two weeks later, he changed his package to Bear Claw, Bear Cat, whatever. I don't. That was fuck this comp. Made him squash Cedric Alexander. The hurt business and and killed Shelton Benjamin, like, and then start beating up more jobbers. Start fighting on main event as Bear Cat. Fucking, I don't know. And and then and then release him. Yeah, uh, and I get that he was um, trying. This to company is miserable. Why? Why are you gonna? Why are you gonna call someone up if you're not gonna use them right? Yeah. Why are you gonna call someone up if you're gonna change their fucking theme song three different times? Yeah. Why are you gonna call them up and change their gimmick six six times? Keith Lee did not need a gimmick. Keith Keith Lee just had to be Keith Lee. Yeah. He did not need no gimmick. He had to do whatever he does in the ring. You don't have to make him move like some Big Show or or Kane. <laughs> Or Mark Henry, you did not have you did not have to do that. Keith Lee was Keith Lee, doing big ass man, doing flips, doing dives, doing cruiserweight type moves. You did not have to change this entire move set. And if you wanted to change it, if people wanted to change it, you need help because he didn't need to be. He did. did fuck. He did not need a character change. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Same with Karen Cross. Bring his wife out there so she can do the entrance. And no one was out there. No, no one was out there. Karen Cross looked like a 2K21 creation character. 
He he looked he, he looked bland as hell. He looked like he was a joke. Nobody even knew him. Yeah. Nobody even knew him when he looked like Super Shredder. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Bobby so, Fish is another one. He got he was just in the match against Roderick Strong, former Undisputed Era member, and he and and he's gone. Like, oh, that. like I, I thought his contract expired. No, he got no, he got fired. Budget cuts. Yeah. And the Look, next, and Reed. <laughs> the next one. Eva Marie. Skip. <laughs> We don't need to talk about her. <laughs> Fuck her. You're not a wrestler. You're a bad wrestler. You know you know that part when she was looking down, looking for Alexa Bliss? I think she was looking down, looking for her fucking wrestling skill. There was nothing there. She's a porn star. She's an actress. You don't need people like her on your company. You did not need to. I'm surprised that took you that long to release her. Same with Naya fucking, same with Naya Snacks. Same with my hall. Same with her. My, next, my God, bro. Next one is Mia Yim, who's actually one of my favorite women. I haven't seen her in a long time. Mia Yim. Yeah, boy. Mia Yim. Did they mess her up? What's a... They made her retro, they made a, what's it, no, the whole group was retro, reckoning, they made a reckoning. Oh my. In, in, in retribution, that was so bad. And like, where, and I'm like, where has my me and him gone? Uh, 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 hopefully she goes me somewhere and him. else. Like, I want to see her in AEW. I don't care where she goes. I just want to see her be me and him again. She was in Impact before she came to WWE. You yeah. Never know. Yeah. Mia Yim was a whole stable, uh, stable in the women's division of NXT. Fought Shayna Baszler in a good match. Yeah, she should have May- been. She should have been NXT Women's Champion. Fought girls like Amber Amber Moon, Lacey Evans, who, which I'm not surprised she's not released, and. Uh, like who, 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 I think that I think that's all. Nikki Cross, and who is also not released. Uh, and Rhea Ripley, Tony Storm, battle against all of them and had fucking great matches. Then she came up to Raw, as you fucking established as reckoning. My my head was reckoning. It was horrible. Yeah. Thank God Mercedes Martinez, who was another one released, we escaped from that shit. Yeah. She escaped from that and kept on doing what she did yeah, on NXT. No, she, she was also a Triple H project. She had a, a cage match with Rhea Ripley, and I heard it was pretty good. I wish I would watched it. It was it was great. It was great. Yeah. And the next one is Ember And Luke. then... As we mentioned. After after this retribution shit, after this ret- after T Bar and Mace turned on Ali, they kept slap dick and reckoning off TV, and 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 under uh, unto then and then she ma- she kept making she made only one appearance this oh. year as me and him and then released her. That's burial right there. That's a burial. Like what the hell? Yeah. I gotta keep telling like that and then don't use them. Same with slap dick, slap nuts, slap your book bag, hey. slap your bag ass, girlfriend, slap hey. anyone. Hey, watch your mouth. How many times I, like, must I tell you to stop saying that? Slap gay, slap gay dick, I don't know. Slapjack. It's literally, you know, like, I wanna keep people like Shane Throne. Who is another one that recently got released? Yeah. How you gonna keep? How you gonna keep those two, and not use them when they're fucking great? Shane Thorne was awesome as TM61 with Nick Miller, who's been gone. How you? How you gonna keep? How you gonna keep people like that and don't use them? They're good, and then the 
either New Japan or what in what she's rebranded right now, ROH, because they got they went bankrupt. They they um like that he he could be good in the repackaging what ROH is doing or. I don't think he should go to AEW because AEW is getting too crowded. He's going to be lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And he's going to probably be on Dark, which I really don't want him to be on Dark. Yeah. He he don't deserve to be on fucking YouTube. Go to go on TNT or TBS. Like, I really, honestly, I don't know what's next for them both. Keith, Lee Dean, Keith Lee's been released. Keith Lee's days are up. Keith Keith Lee should be going somewhere right now. And I really hope he don't go to Impact. So we can see a Karrion Cross and Bronson Reed versus Keith Lee triple threat match again. I no, I really don't want I don't really want to see that, but you know. But, who else is there? Yeah. There's Grand Metalik and Lindsay Dorado. Who gives a fuck? They asked for their releases. They got it. Yeah. They could go work with Kalisto at AEW, Samurai Del Sol. Yeah. Reform the Lucha House Party. And Kalisto Which, was actually on AEW the other day. Um, and then after he tried to pay a tribute to um, Broly Lee, but then he missed, he spelled uh, John Huber's name wrong. And then... Uh, Brody Lee's wife got mad at him, and um, and Chris Jericho also got mad at him. I'm like, he, but he's, he's he's trying to pay. He just you. misspelled one name. Just misspelled one name wrong. John yeah. and John are the same fucking thing. What they get him? That's petty, bro. Come on. Yeah, it's it, and it was as if he like, oh, the Brody Lee wasn't. A good human. He was uh, disrespect. It's like you're if you were yeah. disrespecting Brody, you would be yeah. disrespecting Brody Lee, like that fucking idiot who who was in who was in one of their li live streams saying fuck Brody Lee. Who the hell are you to say fuck Brody Lee? What is wrong with you? Who said that? Who said that? Some fucking some fucking some fucking guy on a live stream. He spam fuck Brody Lee. And AEW oh, immediately banned him. Damn. Good on a, on a dark episode, he said, "F Brody Lee, F Brody Lee, F Brody, F Brody Lee, F your F your whole family, man. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? Next next month is gonna be Brody Lee's anniversary, literally. Yeah, and, and you're gonna say F Brody Lee. You should jump your ass. And you should go to prison like that ghoul who attacks F Rollins. You should go to prison. Yeah." And like that guy that attacked um, MJF in July. That was funny. Yeah, I, I think he was yeah, trying to he, do that to get on TNT. He, had, he, got, he got on TNT. He yeah, got bro, that, security. That, that, <laughs> that dude just stood there. He, he, he should have just gone for him. He, but he, he just stood there and flashed himself and <laughs> led, him, led himself to get captured. Wait. Flashed himself? No, he was like, "Hey, I'm here," and and then he just let the security Boy, guards come and get him. It. He wasn't even doing nothing. He just got he, he was just posing he, like a wrestler. He got tackled to the ground and jumped by Chris Jericho. Yeah, <laughs> that's messed up. Yeah, that was funny the way. Speaking, he, speaking of that, I watched Raw. Um, yeah, I, I, actually. Well, yeah, oh, a bunch of people got released. Uh, you can look at all of them. Uh, just look up WWE releases November 2021. You realize, man, I got something else to say. You realize it's about 200, over 200 plus wrestlers got released alone this year. Yeah. You know why? why? You can't because Vince can handle them. <laughs> Telling. No. Telling. John Lord, John Lord, nice. People power. Fucking go and tell people people power when you gotta get for this. But but boys and girls, man, because the people power said so. Yeah. Are you are you fucking kidding me? Budget cuts. Suck my ass. Kiss my ass. 
budget cuts is not the reason. It's because you don't know. Because it's because you keep hoarding talent and not using them properly. Yeah. So, so you're telling me it's all it's all budget cuts. It's all budget cuts. Releasing Orny Lorkin and Danny Birch and all and 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 the rest of, and all all the people who was on Triple H's NXT. You really telling me that you don't have a problem with all of them? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you have you fucking serious? Johnny Gargano, Kyle O'Reilly's fucking can't wait for December 26th where he gets released so he can join him and Bobby Fish at AEW to form the original one speed of era while Roderick Strong can just rot as a, as a Cruiserweight champion. I mean, he, you know, he, he, I, Kyle can't wait. He can't wait. Look at them hugging. A, all, a, all, all the, uh, like, Roman, Ro, Ro, the only thing that's keeping WWE alive is Big E and Roman Reigns. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we will talk about that later in our review. Damn, we've already gone 30 minutes on this thing. Anyway. And I'm, I'm going to go longer because I really have a lot to say because yeah. you, you you need to you need to stop. We need to stop hoarding talent because whatever you whatever you do is just going to go worse for you and then just end up making you suffer as like you suffer or wh what uh, get budget cuts, budget cuts. You tell me you can't get, you can't get budget cuts because you're fucking hoarding talent but not you not using them half these fucking talents are people from nxt they're really trying to get rid of the original nxt they, re they really are and, and and vince is trying to not to not show it obviously they're fucking they're fucking showing i mean i mean are you that how, how you not surprised jackson riker has been released drake maverick's been released Drake and Drake Maverick, I feel bad. He got fired twice. I yeah. feel horrible yeah. for him. Well, I got you fired should twice. never get fired twice. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and now, but, and I guess uh, people are happy they fired Jackson Riker because apparently he's a Trump, he's a hardcore Trump supporter, and. That you know what you know what I think that's why they kept him in the in the company for all this time. He's a Trump supporter. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So it's the whole fucking more wrestling entertainment, literally. Yeah. But and and who else, who 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 else they they released Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed is fine. He's feuding with Josh Alexander on Impact Wrestling. He's fine. He got work. Bray, Bray Wyatt, he also Bray Wyatt, he's doing a movie, so he's not going to AEW. So that, so ever dream of that is not gonna is not gonna happen yet. Braun Strowman, stay the fuck away from from AEW. Stay the fuck away from Impact. Stay the fuck away from New Japan. And stay away from ROH. You don't deserve to go there. You're a horrible wrestler. Go run around the train at home. You fucking bum. Stay away from us. All of us. Damn, Dang. I know who else like that. that I, think, I think. Well, it's obviously more, but I think I think that's it. Like, yeah, Mercedes yeah. Martinez. You know, she was almost about to be buried in retribution, literally, but she actually escaped from that and the feud with Zia Lee, who was making her main roster debut on SmackDown next week. If which she's about to be another one because she's a Triple H, she's a Triple H girl, yeah, like Tia Knox, and 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 the rest mid, um, the, who, who else? Who, who else is even there to get like come <laughs> on, and and who else? And that's about it. Oh, Hit Row, yeah, <sighs> Hit Row. Um, how they released the female, and then three weeks later they released the entire faction. Damn. I knew this was not gonna last. Yeah, Hit this... Row was one of the final Triple H projects. Hit Isaiah Swerve Scott was a was trip was Triple H from the beginning. 
he he was just another they brought him up to SmackDown just to do this. But this day to come. Yeah. Zero dollar now. Yeah. Shotzi the Adonis. Fuck Fab and Isaiah Swerve Scott. They, and I only say Scott respectfully because he's a damn good wrestler. He's and I'm saying, yep, better than Ricochet. And and one of them is terminated, and one of them has failed to book badly and lost in the battle royale last night. Yeah, uh, and, I mean, and Top Dollar was going crazy on Twitter, blocking everybody and saying uh, all this stuff. He blocked JD. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, he kind of deserved to be blocked. Anyway. Who, who, uh, who else got? Who else got really? Taya Valkyrie, yeah. Frankie Monet. Frankie uh, she was a trip. She was a Triple H project. She's thirty-seven years old. That would the age difference tell her doom from from the company. So John Morrison too, like, is re- what got recently released too. Yeah. Like, I did not expect that. Like, damn, John Tony Khan, Tony Khan, do not release, do not pick up John. He, his value right now is not worth it anymore. He can go back to New Japan as Johnny Nitro. Go back to Impact Wrestling as Johnny Impact. Stay the hell away. For me, W gonna end up like a Shane Throne. You're gonna be also lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And but I, I honestly don't think that's gonna be helpful for him either. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to go to the next topic, which is as as you mentioned before, the fan who attacked Seth Rollins. So Seth oh Rollins was going back to gorilla um, when a dude um, in a bloodline t-shirt in a black bloodline t-shirt speared him um, and uh, they basically had a wrestling match on the floor security came to stop him uh, and and uh, he even made a video the guy who who speared Seth Rollins his name is Eliza uh, uh, something it's like 24 years old same age as Josh and <clears throat> he made a video and said that he did it for the bloodline uh, I did it for the, the, the bloodline the, the, the tribal chief the head of the table the universal champion Roman Reigns and the bloodline and it was like oh my gosh like, where's my hands are so weird? Oh my god! Anyway, to this guy and the guy who tried to jump MJF in July, just stay out of the ring. Stay in the stands where you belong. Don't jump the barricade because you'll get beat up. And thrown out of the building and banned for life from these shows. He is never, ever going. I'm telling you right now, he is banned from a WWE show for life. Yeah. This, I expect this. People from Brooklyn, the people from New York are fucking crazy. They, like, literally. And no offense to you guys, but you gotta be kidding me. Like, like, First of all, he ran from Gorilla to spear him and have a five-second wrestling match. You're literally a human being, not professionally wrestled, beating up one of their live performers. Because if I was him, I would have straight-up curb stomp him and broke his whole fucking teeth. Oh, damn. Okay. Pedigree, break your neck, F5, like you break his neck to A-Train, I'd do that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Or oh, you got beat up and you're gonna sit there and yell at him, Seth Rollins? What are you doing? 
What are you doing? Get him off me, Rita! He ruined my moment! Oh my gosh, you sound exactly like you. He ruined my moment! I'm live on USA! And I'm over here trying to do my post because I won the match! And he's attacking me! And do a Roman Reigns spear! A dead man's line! Get him out of here! Are you fucking getting. Defend yourself, man! What are you doing? Yeah. You were having some random. The commentary team was like, "What the fuck?" Was I, I, I don't know. They was like, "What?" what was, like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, "What the?" F oh no! Please don't tell me you disconnected. Damn it! Oh, he disconnected. What happened to him? WWE press charges on him. WWE let WWE WWE pin him in the from the NYPD and put him in jail and then released then released him and said oh, it was for the bloodline for the head of the table for the yeah. tribal chief day one the <laughs> universal yeah. Yeah. Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> Roman not, Reigns, my ass. Roman Reigns did not introduce you to beat up the Shield member. Are yeah. you fucking out of your mind? What is wrong with you? Yeah. What kind of speech is that? He said he also said that he got catfished by a Seth <sighs> Rollins account. You should know Seth Rollins should never say to attack you live on air doing this thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, we... the fuck? moving on. Yeah, yeah. This is a stupid ass situation, bro. Yeah. He's a stupid ass. Move on. So the next one, Becky Lynch had a, quite a bit of words for the players, Charlotte and Rick. Uh, this is after Rick Flair got exposed for raping that um, flight attendant on the dark side of the ring. Um, oh. Yeah, and everybody buried him on Twitter. Um, yeah. I, I, I hopefully feel bad for him because now he's he used to be this all time great world champion, seventeen time world champion. Now he's um, this guy who's just there and now he's starting to become irrelevant. But anyway and, and what he did was totally wrong and nobody should try to do that. No, it's Yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I'll pay attention to the dark side of the ring anyway. Uh, what the fuck? Yeah, uh, so Becky Lynch, uh, Rick Flair was still mad at um, Becky Lynch for um, using the man. Uh, and now she stopped using the man, and Rick Flair is angry. I mean, that. I would, I mean the, real per the real person she should blame is fucking Nia Jack. She made that shit happen. The fuck? Yeah. It was all her fault. Remember that? Like, come on, bro. Where yeah. she punched Becky's nose and broke it, and then she all of a sudden she got extremely over and turned to this man bullshit. Literally. Got fucked by Seth Rollins and now returning. <laughs> like the real person she should blame is is Nia fat ass. That's all she should blame. Man, you need to calm down. The, the jokes, the jokes. I love it. But anyway, uh, so sorry for the fat, sorry for fat shaming. But okay, thank you. at one time, something was gonna happen. So now, if you excuse me, I, I gotta use the bathroom. Okay. So basically, uh, it, she, she, no, Rick Flair was angry that Becky Lynch stopped using the man. So like, I don't know how to do a Rick Flair um, voice, but now you, you use this man gimmick only to drop it and become big time Bex. I hope Charlotte 
actually, for some reason, uh, he actually said that she should beat up Charlotte Flair um, and not Charlotte beat up Becky Lynch. I don't know why um, he got that wrong, but I'm pretty sure he meant, I hope Charlotte beats the piss out of you at Survivor Series. And it, that certainly did not happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, Becky just, uh, I can't remember exactly what she said. Uh, I'm back. She, she basically roasted Charlotte. Yeah, um, and uh, she said that it's quite sad how Ric Flair has turned out. Um, and yeah, this, this beef between Becky and Charlotte is quite wild. <clears throat> So now, which brings us to Survivor Series. Um, on the that's it? That's all the news? Yeah, that's all the news. On the 21st of November, 2021, in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. And now we have the first match, which is a champion versus champion match. And Josh hates What and is this? Uh, this is a champion versus champion match between the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch and SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. Fuck those matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they had a video package, That's which I talk. thought was good. And, uh, it, it, you know, we don't know if this rivalry is real or just for work. Um, because I think they really do dislike one another. Um, and damn, this is like crazy. So anyway, Charlotte Flair makes an entrance, followed by Becky Lynch. They get in the ring, and the match starts. Uh, Charlotte punches Becky Lynch. They have a one-two, and it's like going all over the place. And these girls are going crazy, and I'm like, Damn. And Becky kicks Charlotte's, Charlotte, Charlotte spears her. They go and fight on the outside. They replay Becky kicking uh, Charlotte. Charlotte hit a backbreaker and kicked her. Becky laid down selling. Uh, Charlotte started to beat up Becky, then she choked Becky, then taunted. Damn. Then she shot Becky off into the ring post. She tried to hit a moonsault. Then Becky Lynch pushed her off. And Charlotte gave Becky Lynch a back suplex on the outside. Then they uh, had a stare down. They did another one-two. Charlotte hit a clothesline. She hit some chops in the corner. <coughs> Becky Lynch uh, kick Charlotte. Charlotte tried to pin Becky Lynch. Then Charlotte hit a power bomb for a two count. She shot Becky into the corner. They swap. Then Becky Lynch kicked Charlotte in the corner. Um, I think Becky Lynch tried to hit the back exploder, but then Charlotte reversed and then hit. Becky's move to backsplode on Becky Lynch. <laughs> and Charlotte taunted and actually said shit on the air. Uh, this is not the first time she's cussed on live pay-per-view. Uh, she gave everybody a finger on, on Money in the Bank against Rhea Ripley. Uh, that match was really good. I think that was the best match. That was the best match of the, the whole night. And then, um, was, don't uh, go that far, bro. Yeah. Then, uh, she tried to hit a moonsault. She missed. But then she finally hit the moonsault for a two count. Uh, <laughs> she tried to in Becky and then uh, she hung Becky Lynch on the rope ropes 
Becky Lynch slapped her and punched her. Becky Lynch gave her a leg drop. They replayed the leg drop. Then Charlotte gave a big gave a big boot to Becky for an ear fall. They replayed it. Uh Bakes get some kind of move. Yeah. You know when Finn Balor does that um that thing where he has the guy um uh, you know, when Cody Rhodes is about to hit crossroads, he's got him in that hole. And then he does like an elbow drop onto the guy. Becky Lynch did something that looked like that, uh, but I wasn't sure what it was called. Um, <clears throat> and then they replayed that move. And then Becky Lynch beat Charlotte up. She tried to hit a leg drop. Then she hit a man handle slam, tried to pin her, but then they got Charlotte got a rope break. Charlotte gave Becky a big boot to the floor. They replayed it, and then uh, Charlotte did a botched moonsault, and then they actually replayed that botched moonsault. Um, <laughs> And then I'm wondering or something. The fuck? Why? Why? Bot why would you? Why did they play the botch moves? Yeah. <laughs> and and then Charlotte uh, tried to use Becky. Oh, the worst moves out of the bit, by the way. Yeah. Charlotte tried to use Becky Lynch's disarm her, and then they did a one-two. Uh, Charlotte did some machine gun chops, which I hate when they do that. When they go like those, I don't know why people do that. Uh, it's My like eyes such, out. Wait. Such a dumb move. But anyway, Becky won via a roll-up pin, and I gave Wrestling a seven point five and Logic a six. What do you think about this match? My Wi-Fi is out, so y'all gonna have to see me in ghost. Uh, uh, uh like give wrestling a logic. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, 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 uh, oh shit! Oh shit! Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll give it a 4.5. Okay. All right. Just because, big. just because, just because that mood salt ruins everything. Stop doing the mood salt. Fuck. Okay. And then we had the second, yelling. the second match, which is the men's Survivor Series match. Team Raw, consisting of Bobby Lashley, <laughs> Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, my favorite, Kevin Owens, and Austin Theory versus Team SmackDown, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Xavier Woods, Sheamus, and Jeff Hardy. Team Raw made their entrances, followed by Team SmackDown. They all got in the ring, <clears throat> and the bell rang, and the match started. Seth and Kevin Owens argued. Uh, Kevin Owens and Xavier Woods was going to start until Kevin Owens walked out and eliminated himself. Uh, Seth, Seth Rollins was angry and yelled at him. And then Drew McIntyre went on the outside and gave him a shoulder tackle. Theory and Woods are starting the match. King Woods beat up Austin Theory. McIntyre got tagged in. And now <laughs> McIntyre's beating up Austin Theory. Sheamus got tagged in and beat up Austin Theory. More. So got and then Baron Corbin tagged in, beat up Austin Theory some more. Seth Rollins tagged in to replace Austin Theory. And Woods got tagged in and shocked 
and Trump said for all of us, shot off this fan. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, and then Jeff Hardy tags in, uh, gives Seth Rollins an axe handle on his arm. Uh, why, I'm like, why is Seth Rollins getting beat up? He's a main event guy. And then Seth Rollins finally made a comeback and he tagged Finn Balor. Uh, Finn Balor uh, tried to twist Sheamus's arm. He escaped and tagged Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin stomped Finn. Uh, he, he tagged Xavier Woods and he gave Finn Balor an el elbow drop. Drew McIntyre got tagged in and he gave Finn Balor a vertical suplex for a two count. Hardy tagged in and he locked up the Finn. Baron Corbin tagged in and Finn Balor tried to crawl and make the tag, but then Finn Balor finally made a comeback and got a two count. And then Baron Corbin gave him a deep six, but and Corbin tried to pin him, but then Lashley made the save. And then I'm wondering if Lashley is legal. I don't think he is. <laughs> And then Drew McIntyre gave Lashley a belly to belly suplex with a release to the outside. Seth Rollins kicked Drew McIntyre onto the outside. Theory gave Austin Theory gave a back elbow to Seth Rollins. Corbin gave Theory a choke slam. Finn made a comeback and gave him. Finn made a comeback, gave Baron Corbin a coup de grace and eliminated. Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor had to stay down. People were chanting Hardy, Hardy, Hardy. Oh, uh, Jeff Hardy gave Finn Balor some. Punches, a gut buster, a double leg drop, and an elbow drop for a two count. Uh, Finn Balor gave him a drop kick for a two count. Seth Rollins tagged in. He gave um, uh, Jeff Hardy two axe handles. Lashley tagged in. He speared Jeff Hardy in the corner, and he beat up Jeff Hardy in the corner. Finn Balor tagged back in, and he gave Jeff Hardy a chin lock. Seth Rollins tagged, and Jeff Hardy gave him a swanton bomb. Lashley beat up Drew McIntyre on the outside, slammed him into the ring post. Austin Theory is legal, and he stomped on him. Jeff Hardy. Hardy gave him a cradle pin for a two count. Xavier Woods made a really good comeback, which is the, which was the best part of the match. He tried to hit a frog splash off the top rope, but then Lashley pushed him off and speared him. And then uh, he gave him the hurt block and eliminated him. And then the rest of Team SmackDown jumped him. The rest of Team Raw tried to help him. Finn Balor gave <coughs> Sheamus and Jeff Hardy a double sling blade. Finn Balor tried to do a dive on Sheamus. And then Seth Rollins did a dive. Drew McIntyre got tagged in. And now he was in the ring with Bobby Lashley. They both had a one-two. Lashley did a leapfrog and then gave Drew McIntyre a rushing leg sweep reverse. Uh, he gave Drew McIntyre a spear in the corner. Drew McIntyre hit a clothesline. Um, where was uh, They fought on the outside. They both got counted out and the crowd booed. And they continued to fight. 
to fight in the uh, referees and MVP tried to restrain Bobby Lashley and then Seth Rollins was pestering McIntyre to leave and then Drew McIntyre gave Seth Rollins a, a Glasgow kiss Sheamus got a near fall Finn Balor tagged in Sheamus gave him a clothesline and he slammed him for a two count uh, Finn Balor gave him a sling blade he tried to hit a coup de gras but then Sheamus gave him a broke kick and eliminated him Austin Theory drop kicked Sheamus which looked really good and then um what was it Theory stomped on Sheamus in the corner Seth Rollins made the tag they both stomped Sheamus in the corner the Seth gave Sheamus a Seth gave Sheamus a uh, snap snu suplex for a two count. He put in the chin lock. He gave he Sheamus escapes. He choke slammed Seth Rollins. Hardy made Hardy tagged and he made a comeback. He did a splash for a two count. Sheamus made a tag. Shoot. He shot Theory off into Seth Rollins. Then he, then both him and Jeff Hardy gave Seth Rollins and Austin Theory 10 beats of the Baron. Uh, Sheamus gave Seth Rollins a backdrop. Austin Theory made a tag and gave Sheamus a leg lock. Oh, last match. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, theory eliminated Sheamus with a roll up pin. This was fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and then Sheamus got angry and put <laughs> Theory to sleep and then knocked out Theory as well. I don't know why I wrote that. Um, maybe I meant Seth Rollins. Um, Seth Rollins gave Sheamus a smash, splash. For a near fall, Seth Rollins and Austin Theory double suplex tried to give Jeff Hardy a double superplex. Jeff Hardy gave Theory a swanton bomb and eliminated him. The people were chanting Hardy, Hardy, <laughs> and then. Seth Rollins was trash talking, and Jeff Hardy tried to hit a uh, twist of fate, but then gave him a side Russian leg sweep for a near fall. The people were chanting, This is awesome. Then Seth Rollins tried to give Jeff Hardy a storm, but then Jeff Hardy finally hit the twist of fate, and then he Tried to hit a swanton bomb, but then he hit Seth Rollins' knees. Then Seth Rollins gave him a stomp and beat him. So I thought this match was quite good, and I gave it wrestling a seven and logic a two. What do you think about that? Fixing my Wi-Fi circuit, so I'm back. Okay. Uh. No celebration? Damn, fucked up. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, that match. Uh, Aslan, 10. Logic, 9. Great fucking match. That was a great match. Okay, yeah. I'm actually gonna up my rating as well. To a 9. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, even with a refreshed computer, it's still gonna uh, stop recording in the middle of when we're trying to record. Cabo is horrible. 
I want you guys to know that he doesn't have tactic. He does. Te his tech is fucking horrible. Bl if they want something to blame, blame it on Capo. Thank you very much. I'm out. See you later. later. Man. Shut <laughs> up, bro. Anyway, we we said that um that that men's Survivor Series was great. Uh, Rel Sucker here loved it, and he gave wrestling a ten and Logic a nine, and I uh propped up my my rating to wrestling nine and logic oh, can this one please not don't stop recording uh when you, you, were, you were talking about uh the last match that happened um i may have my discord crash Sorry about that, guys. Shift the back to normal. I'm sorry for all these technical difficulties. I can't do anything about it. Um, but anyway, uh, let me pull up the notes here. Uh, we were talking about how good the main Survivor Series match and some other stuff in between. And now we're on the uh, champion versus champion match with the Usos versus RK Bro. So um, the Usos made uh, their entrance, followed by RK Bro. They started the match. And then Riddle and Jimmy Uso started. They did some technical wrestling. Jimmy Uso did a kick. A headbutt and then he punched Matt Riddle in the corner. He shot off Matt Riddle into the other corner. Well, um, Riddle did a backflip. He kicked Jimmy Uso. Uh, he he uh, spun Matt Riddle and then uh, gave him a fall away slam. Uh, Randy Orton tagged in. He stomped Jimmy. Jimmy Uso gave him chops in the corner. Corner. Uh, he shot off Randy into the other corner. Randy the Usos are jumped outside. Cabo's dirty ass. Still, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jay Uso tagged in. He beat up Randy Orton in the corner. Randy Orton poked. Shut up, up cat. <laughs> uh, Matt Riddle did a assisted moonsault on Jay Uso. Matt Riddle moonsaulted Jimmy in the on the outside. He fought Jay Uso on the outside. Jimmy Uso did a dive on Matt Riddle. They got back in the ring. Jimmy Uso gave Matt Riddle a cheap shot. Then they did a double team. Uh, Jimmy Uso gave him a back drop. Punched him in the corner. Gave him a back elbow. Matt Riddle gave uh, Jay a kick. He tried to tag Randy Orton but then Jimmy stopped him. Jimmy Uso gave him a headlock. Tried really really still trying to tag Randy Orton. Jimmy Uso snapped suplex riddle. Then Matt Riddle gave Jimmy Uso bottom line. Uh Gave Randy Orton did a hot tag. He tried to give them a draping beam team. Dragged to the outside. A slam on the downstairs. Gave him back suplex on the announce sticks. 
he gave Jey Uso a back suplex on the announce desk. He super kicked Grant. Uh, Jey Uso gave Randy Orton a super kick in the ring. Uh, Shut up! Shut up! I'm gonna kick Randy, your face right now. Hey, don't don't beat up the cat, please. Uh, <clears throat> it keeps me out while we're recording. Randy Orton did hit a draping DDT on Jay Uso. He popped the crowd and teased the RKO. He tried to hit a RKO and gave Jay Uso a super kick, slapped him, and gave him a super kick. Uh, Matt Riddle made a cold tag. Uh, Jay Uso gave him a pop up. Matt Riddle gave him. The German suplex with the bridge for a two count. Usos did a double team. Matt Riddle tried to make a comeback. Uso stopped him. Usos double super kick Randy and Riddle. They team Matt Riddle for a near fall. Jimmy Uso made a tag. Riddle super shot Jay into the ring post. Jimmy Uso tried to super kick. Matt Riddle then hit an insecurity. Randy Orton made a tag. A Jimmy Uso super kick Randy and knocked out Matt Riddle. Uh, tried to hit a Uso splash and then out of nowhere, Matt uh, Randy Orton hit his RKO out of nowhere and won. I gave Brassie the six and Logic the five. What do you think about that match? What was this match? Uh, this was a tag team match. First of all, I did not like that. The Losing because the Usos keep open. I do not like the fact that the Usos lost because the Usos keep losing over and over. Yeah, and Rain and Roman Reigns actually got mad at them last year uh, for losing uh, when Jim Jay Uso lost the Survivor Series match. Uh, Roman Reigns gave him a talking to. Um, what a, Okay, well, anyway, so, uh, go on, anything else you would like to say about this match? The only spot that looked good was that Uso splashed into an RKO. Yeah, yeah. And then Randy Orton is getting old, but still has the fucking moves. Yeah. But... He, he also on. broke. He also broke the record for more pay per view matches. He he had more pay per view matches than Kane. And he's got to have the end. And then he's about. To, and then he's gonna break that record with Raw too. He yeah. actually did already. Yeah. So congrats for congrats to Randy. Uh, congratulations. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Crowd was dead. No built up to it. Wrestling six, lot logic zero. <laughs> uh, okay. um, just the fucking match because it's because just the match was fucking put because it was because it was Survivor Series. That's why. Yeah. And the only time they built up to it was one week ago. The fuck. Yeah. And and um, it was Randy Orton's daughter's birthday the other day and happy birthday uh to randy orton's daughter um and well, the father's a great fucking wrestler been great wrestler since evolution and now still is yeah and now we have the second last match which is the women's survivor series match of team raw this match was horrible yeah. Well, it was fine, but there were too many no stakes, so I skipped ahead some of it and went down to the last two minutes. Um, not from, I um, I give it uh, I'm, and I'm gonna give my points already. Zero, zero. 
damn. Actually, um, I'm just going to say because I'm hungry and I want to bring this thing home. We've been at this for over an hour. Uh, but, yeah, uh, at the last two minutes was uh, Shotzi Blackheart and uh, Bianca Belair going at it. They had a pretty good one-on-one. -on -one. First of all, the only good thing was that Bianca Belair eliminated all fucking wrestlers. Yeah. After, and she was the only one remaining for Raw. Yeah. That was the only thing good about it. Yeah. And Tony Storm, who was a Triple H project, the only one eliminated. The only one pinned. And then, Tony uh, Storm's about to fight Charlotte Flair soon for the belt. At, probably at day one or Royal Rumble. So... Yeah. So I gave wrestling. Got pied, by the way. Uh, I gave. Go and send you the wrestling a six, and logic a two, probably. And then next is the main event. A another champion versus champion. Match. Look at the picture. There we go. Before I say anything about this, uh, I. I just want to say I'm tired of these. I'm tired of these freaking uh, having two world champions in one promotion. If you have two world champions, then who's the champion of your company? Even if you have uh, a. Survivor Series match, still, it doesn't prove anything. We still have two world champions in the same company. So, one of these days, they have it's to a lose lose situation because, yeah, I get upset because people like Joe Cronin, what JD says, champions should not, should not lose a match. Champions should not lose a match. Yeah, and that's what Josh likes to say. That's why he hates champion versus champion matches. Because it's a lose-lose situation. Any champion's gonna fucking lose. SmackDown champion lost. SmackDown tag team champions lost. WWE champion lost. Intercontinental champion lost. Wait, US champion lost. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you four champions lost. Champion. One night. Yeah. Jobs here. We'll both be banging on fucking walls right now. Yeah. Oh my. That's Horrible. What I, that's what I miss. When Josh would just go on that wall. And then that one time when, when we told him about the um the three sisters, he just went like, on his walls. Oh. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up, bro. <laughs> I don't want to be reminded of that. It wasn't even three sisters. It was fucking boys. I don't want to be reminded of that. It was men dressed up as girls, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, that was so funny. Oh, but anyway, uh, they did a video package, and it was really good, really, really good. And even last year with Drew McIntyre, that, uh, the video package they did for that was really good. Had good music, good story, nice build up. Um, and then after that, uh, Big E made his entrance, um, ro followed by Roman Reigns. They started the match. They had a stare down. The people were chanting E. They locked up. Rope break. They locked up again. Roman stepped out of the ring. Uh, he got a pep talk from Paul Heyman. Roman Reigns got back in the ring. They locked up again. Big E got a waist lock. They did a one-two. Roman did a jumping clothesline. He beat up Big E. He punched uh, Big E in the corner. Raven Bell punched him in the other corner. Big E did a leap 
frog back elbow for one count. He gave him a big boot. He gave him some clubby blows. Tried to hit a splash on the apron and missed. Roman Reigns gave him a drive by. They got back in the ring. Uh, they he punched him in the corner. Gave him an uppercut for a one count. Gave him an elbow drop, a back elbow for a two count. And people are chanting, New, New, they rocks. New, they rocks. And uh, he was not tonight, Roman. Says, not, not tonight, says the tribal chief. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. tonight. Roman Reigns gave Biggie a big boot. He hit the roots and gave hit the ropes and gave him another big boot for a two count. He told the crowd to shut up and then threatened to go and fight them. How can you go and fight fifteen thousand people individually? They'll all run away or they'll all try to jump you. Uh he shoots off Biggie onto the outside, they fight on the outside. Uh, uh, Roman Reigns shot Biggie off into the steel steps. He laid down selling. Uh, Biggie almost got counted out, but Roman Reigns stepped out and broke the count. They fought on the outside some more. Uh, and then uh, Biggie shot Roman Reigns off into the steel steps. They both laid down selling. They got back into the ring and laid down selling some more. Uh, Big E gave uh, Roman Reigns three belly to belly suplexes. He did a splash. He hyped up the crowd, teased big ending. Roman Reigns gave him a Simone drop. He beat up Big E in the corner. He gave him a clothesline in the other corner. Gave Biggie a urinagi for a two. No, Biggie gave Roman Reigns a urinagi for a two count. Gave him a stretch muffler. Roman Reigns countered with a power bomb for a near fall. Roman Reigns uh, teased a Superman punch but missed. Uh, he gave Biggie a rock bomb for a two count. Uh, people are chanting Rocky, Rocky, and they replayed the rock bottom. Roman Reigns gave gave him a gave B three Superman punches, but B kept getting up. Roman Reigns taunted, teased the spear. B shot Roman Reigns onto the apron. He speared him through the middle rope. They got back in the ring. Roman Reigns put a spear for a near fall. They replayed it. The people were chanting something, but I couldn't comprehend. A couple of people were chanting Biggie Rocks. Uh, Biggie tried to spear Roman Reigns, but then um, Roman Reigns gave a submission to hold on the ropes. Uh, they got a rope break. He hung Biggie on the ropes. Finally gave him a gu guillotine in the middle of the ring. Uh, Biggie gave Roman Reigns a big ending, but Roman Reigns got a rope break. The people are chanting, this is awesome. Roman Reigns stepped outside. They fought on the outside. Roman Reigns gave him a Superman punch off the steel steps and they got he, they got back in the ring then Roman Reigns speared Big E and beat him and I think that ending was quite flat and uh, the WWE championship was quite flat. and Roman Reigns didn't even cheat he pinned him clean even a roll up, uh, so um, I gave wrestling an 8.5 and wrestling Say something. Um, three. Okay, another champion loss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no.
How can you? <laughs> I think it's me. How can another champion? How can how can a champ? How can the second biggest champion in your company lose clean? Yeah, and no evil. rock, no rock. Out like what the fuck? That was the part of this show. They I mean, really need to stop this. They really need to stop this champion versus championship matches because everybody's gonna. I'm out. He, you know, you know what, you know what, you know who else is, you know who's reinstated right now, and it's mm. coming next week on SmackDown. Mm. Brock Lesnar. Oh, oh yeah, I remember yeah. he got banned for like a month. He got beat up. He got banned because he ripped Adam Pierce's pants in F five. That's why. <laughs> and I, and I still got a picture. I will show you. Like what the hell? Oh, right. And I will wait for it. Oh my gosh, this Tony Storm looks like she got her calmed on. In that picture. www.black.com. www.black.com. I appreciate it. Join the, li join the live streams of Big Black Cock. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, fucking niggas. I can uh, say it. Yeah, you can say it. Because oh, I can say what I want. Anyway, uh, well, when is when did it, when it, so we're gonna come back for day one or what? Yeah, we're actually gonna come back for the season two premiere, which is gonna be. A review of AEW Winter is coming. Uh, that was actually the subject of the first episode, the first official episode. Me and Josh. The did prototype, that. prototype episode, right? Well, not the prototype. That was um, Full Gear and Survivor Series. Um, the first official episode was um, Winter is coming. Um, and we, right, we could have talked about day one or Royal Rumble. Why right? you gotta talk about a fucking TNT fake pay per view show? Yeah, I, I won't be here for I'm, day I, one. I'll give you credit. Last year, Sting came in from the Winter is Coming, yes, but yeah, Sting came in uh, from last. That's gonna be his anniversary, but that, yeah. but but any other pay per view, right? Other yeah. than this piece of shit, this fucking pay per view was. Yeah. Worst pay per view in, a, in two decades. Worst pay per view in 20 years. So I gave Wrestling, uh, for the whole show, I gave Wrestling an 8 and Logic a 2, probably. I hope I said that. I give it a Wrestling, um, wrestling 2, Logic 0. Damn. Okay. One of the worst pay per views ever. Until you learn how to book the Survivor Series right and not announcing random ass matches on fucking Twitter. Literally, on Twitter. You get me intrigued. This match had no meaning. And the only time they had the time to build up was the go home show to smack down from Survivor Series. That was it. Now, other than that, they announced everything on Twitter and took out two fucking men each team. Give me a fucking break. Until you know how to do it right, wrestling two, lo wrestling one, logic zero. Damn, even, even minus one point. I, I on. know how to own shows. The fuck do you do? Oh, release 60 fucking wrestlers per fucking day. Shut up, Nick Khan, man. Come on, bro. But anyway, we will, we, we will return... For season two premiere on when is, is this show is on the fifteenth. This we will return on December the eighteenth. Uh, for AEW Winter is coming, um, which is actually two days <laughs> after my birthday. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed birthday, this. Man. I hope you guys have enjoyed this 
season one. Happy birthday, man. And this episode in particular, even with the te- technical difficulties, but until the Cabo. next episode, <laughs> this is Carbonate and Raw Suckers. Signing up. <laughs>